Developing for Azure IoT Edge might not be always super simple. There's lots of concepts involved. There's Docker, there's different languages, different tools. Um, and actually, one of the aspects is uh, being able to automate some of that process of developing. Spiros from the CSC team is today here on the IT Show to show us Type Edge, an open source project that will simplify your life as an IoT Edge developer. Hi everyone, thanks for watching the Internet of Things show. I'm Olivier, your host. Today with Spiros, we will talk about Type Edge, which is a new project he's been working on. Spiros, welcome to the show. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Spiros, you're a part of a team called CSC. Right. What does that stand for and what are you guys doing? Right. Uh, in CSC, we're working with uh, partners and customers uh, all around uh, the world. And we're using our latest and greatest uh, Azure technologies. Mm -hmm. And uh, we use that feedback to improve our products. OK. So you're basically like on the, on the front line, working with customers, helping them implement their solution, their product with our technologies, basically, right? Exactly, yeah. OK. Uh, and uh, today, we're going to talk about TypeEdge. OK. And TypeEdge came from uh, that process, working with our partners and customers. Okay. And uh, we uh, heard uh, their feedback, and we created TypeEdge to help them out in uh, some issues. OK, and so it has the Edge name in there. So I assume it's about Azure IoT Edge. Correct. Which is a runtime for bringing the cloud intelligence down to the edge, right? Exactly, exactly. So what is it that made you create that open source project, because it's open source, guys, um, that is called Type Edge? Like, can you give us a bit of a, the insight about the process, how you came into creating that project? Of course. Um, so the past months, we've been, uh, as I said, working with customers. And uh, we noticed a common pattern in uh, their uh, feedback. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, IoT Edge uh, uses uh, containers to isolate yep. the application uh, from the actual um, uh, host runtime. Yep. Um, and that is a pretty cool idea, if you mm -hmm. think about it. Because, uh, because of that, you can do things like um, you can choose a different operating system regardless of the uh, host operating system to do yeah. your development. Mm -hmm. And then you also you can pretty easily mix together um, different languages as part of the same uh, application. Yeah. And in other words, you can have a polyglot application. Yeah. And of course, that freedom comes with a price. Mm -hmm. And the price is around developer experience. Okay. So um, part of the feedback that we uh, got back from some of our customers uh, is first um, all the uh, containers uh, prerequisite uh, makes it kind of um, intimidating for some of uh, our customers and developers, and okay. um, specifically for those that they don't have a strong background in uh, edge development. Okay. And the other thing is that we noticed that um, the application manifest, uh, the configuration file that defines an IoT Edge application and yep. binds together your binaries, mm -hmm. that sometimes can become bottleneck uh, okay. in the development process. A and bit complicated to work with and in its syntax right. and so forth. Right? Yeah, yeah, initially you have to know how to compose it mm -hmm. uh, manually. And yeah. then over time, as you evolve your application, you do mm -hmm. uh, develop your application, you have to make sure that uh, that manifest uh, matches exactly your code. Okay. And there's no good tooling around, uh, dead tooling around that okay. right now. While well, you're building it. Right. <laughs> and this is what I love about the process and the way you guys are doing the thing, which is uh, instead of having people here in Redmond inventing a tool, inventing a technology, and just like shipping it out, uh, we do think about that from the customer's perspective. And you guys are actually already implementing things that don't exist, that are necessary, that are required or asked by the customers. And then, as you're doing right now, we're trying to experiment around that tool and that technology, and then to eventually re-inject that into the product, into the tooling for the product. Exactly. And uh, as you might mention, uh, TypeEdge is uh, an experimentation from our side. Uh -huh. uh, we uh, think is, uh, people are going to love it, yeah. but we want to hear from them and get their feedback. I think the best way is to show them. Exactly. Right. So that way, they're going to see the demo, what it looks like, how to get it, and then I'm sure they're going to vote for it. 
So first of all, let me let me tell you that we make no assumption with TypeEdge about um, the, your developer okay. environment. Uh, it is based on .NET Core, and okay. because of that, you can use any programmatic style. You could be a CLI person, mm -hmm. or you can use VS Code or Visual Studio proper. Okay. Um, the best experience comes with uh, Visual Studio, mainly because of the okay. Docker support. We're okay. going to see about that. Mm -hmm. And also, let me give you a brief, brief explanation, high-level explanation of what is okay. TypeEdge. Okay. So TypeEdge effectively is just a thin layer on top of the IoT Edge uh, runtime, SDK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, TypeEdge just adds a strongly typed uh, development uh, model to mm. the already existing one, uh, loosely coupled one. Okay. Uh, that means uh, you can use the compiler to validate uh, anything that is shared between uh, modules, like um, behavior or structure. Okay. And in other words, if you have two modules in mm -hmm. your ITH application yeah. uh, that communicate, mm -hmm. then you can use the compiler and do that validation of that communication contract okay. compiler time. Okay. So that is good, mm -hmm. but where it gets really interesting is if you use TypeEd in every uh, module you have your application, yeah. then we can uh, generate the manifest for you because mm. the manifest actually is being generated by doing reflection on your code. Okay. So not only that, uh, we generate the manifest and we provision an IoT Hub device for you. Okay. And we make sure that the manifest is always synced to that device. Got it. So you basically have generation of the manifest that will define how the various modules communicate with each other. Yeah. So the manifest is what we call the routing, right, between the various modules. And then what you're saying is that it will actually connect to IT Hub in terms of the tooling. And each time you have a change, it's going to push it to the IT Hub. Exactly. We okay. make sure that you don't have to bother with the manifest. And okay. effectively, the manifest is just a byproduct of the compilation. Okay. okay. Love it. Love it. I want to see it now. Sure. <laughs> so uh, the, the best way to get started with TypeEdge is mm -hmm. actually use our templates. And we mm -hmm. ship many different uh, templates. Uh, the easiest one is uh, to have the full-blown IoT Edge application, which is a solution template. Okay. And since we're talking about uh, .NET Core, mm -hmm. the, we're using the same uh, templating infrastructure in .NET Core to ship the uh, template for uh, TypeEdge. Okay. So uh, to get started, uh, you simply visit the uh, uh, TypeEdge repo, which okay. is open sourced, and mm -hmm. scroll all the way to uh, the installation of the template. Okay. You copy that command mm -hmm. and you uh, paste in your uh, CLI. Okay. So, so you need to have the Azure CLI installed, right? That's the one requirement no, no. they need, right? No, you don't need anything other than .NET Core. Oh, .NET Core in that case, okay. Got it? Got it. Makes sense. All right, what that command just did, uh, it, uh, it just installed for me the TypeEdge app, which okay. is a fully blown IoT Edge application based on TypeEdge. Yep. So once you do that, then you can uh, use the template to create a new uh, solution. Mm -hmm. And I already have the command over here. Okay. Uh, that is just typical .NET new um, mm -hmm. command. And uh, the user gets to choose a couple of things. Yeah. Uh, the first one is the name of the application. Mm -hmm. We give it a name. The second one is uh, that application has a couple of uh, modules. Okay. Uh, so you get to choose the name for each one. Okay. And finally, you have to give the connection string of your uh, hub. Okay. And the last thing is, uh, if you want to go all the way to uh, publishing mm -hmm. your containers, you have to give us the container registry. Okay, got it. We're going to see yep, that. Yep. And it could be both uh, Docker registry or yeah. ACR or okay, yeah. got it. So running this command will effectively generate uh, the template with the uh, correct names and uh, the correct uh, configuration. And mm -hmm. this is the template. I'm going to use Visual Studio. As I said, okay. we could use anything, even CLI, to run the application. Uh, but just for the purpose of showing the code, yep. I'm going to show you everything in Visual Studio. Today. Nice. So as I mentioned, this application, this template is uh, um, a two-module and uh, fully blown IoT Edge application. Mm -hmm. And um, TypeEdge actually uses the same programmatic paradigm uh, as with other uh, services, uh, infrastructure, or technologies like WCF, web services, mm -hmm. web APIs. Mm -hmm. It uses the notion of a proxy. Okay. So the proxy effectively is a way you describe the behavior and the structure of a module. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have exactly the same idea as, okay. a, as code over here. The proxy is just an interface, it is similarly to uh, the R technologies. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the first module. Uh, in this interface, we can tell that 
this module has an output, which yep. is called output, and yep. also defines a type for mm -hmm. that output. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, between, and uh, finally has a direct method. Okay. Uh, the other, the second uh, module over here is even simpler, just has an output and a twin. Okay. All right, so what you have to do after you define your contracts is implement it. Uh -huh. All right, so um, over here we have the implementation. Uh, the implementation actually is uh, straightforward, uh, just uh, the two um, properties, mm -hmm. output and module, and then the direct method. Okay. On top of that, we have a, an override, a hook to uh, use if you want to run code like uh, uh, while loops. We've seen patterns uh, generally in ITH where you know, uh, the device, um, the code on the device just um, reads data from the sensors and then yep. publishes messages. And, yep, and that's it. So this code effectively mm -hmm. just uh, runs a while loop and uh, okay. creates a message every mm -hmm. one second. Okay. All right. So uh, the second module is even more interesting because the second module is going to read the data from the first one. Yeah. And react. Uh, so the idea is we have the uh, notion of the proxy, as I said, and uh -huh. that proxy can be uh, automatically generated as a proxy from TypeIt for you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we're using a uh, dependency injection. Okay. And uh, when you actually fire up at runtime, uh, your code, um, the, uh, the um, type edge um, library will give you a fully blown proxy to use. Mm -hmm. And at runtime, you can do things like subscribe to that. Okay. So in this case, this module just uses that, the first uh, definition of the first proxy mm -hmm. and subscribes to its output. And okay. if you remember, that output has a structure and if you can see uh, that message over here, we know mm -hmm. that this message is of type sensor module output. Got it. So you can now start looking into it. Exactly. Got so uh, this way we can have all good things like intelligence nice. and um, compile time validation that mm -hmm. the, these two modules actually are compatible. Rather than having to use JSON parsers and, and then extract the data it. and validate it. and yeah, At runtime. Yeah, That's at runtime, even yeah. worse. Yeah. <laughs> even harder to debug, definitely. So this is it. This is the code. We okay. have two modules. The first one just generates a message every one second. The second one just um, subscribes to that yeah. and enhances, in this case, the, me the message yeah. and publishes the message to its output. Okay. All right. Wow. So we just implemented and develop our code yeah. in uh, our two modules. Uh, how do you test it locally? How do you test it? How do you <laughs> test it? <laughs> So uh, we have the notion of uh, the emulator. The emulator uh -huh. is just um, effectively just a Donor Core app okay. that uh, uses the same bits of the official IETH runtime. Okay. And uh, since the IETH runtime is a Donor Core, mm -hmm. um, we uh, thought why not firing up everything in memory without having to use containers. Okay. So you basically are all local, all the way to the point you don't have to use any sort of container technology here, like it. Okay. Yeah, so if you do that, first of all, you have to configure your emulator. You have to give it some configuration to, okay. to read the uh, connection string from. Uh -huh. And then you can do, you have to register your two modules. Okay. Uh, over here, we say this application has two modules with mm -hmm. that definition and this uh, implementation. Okay. And moreover, whenever we want to do things like uh, move data to the upstream across uh, the context of a module, mm -hmm. We could do it over here. In this case, we say uh, the upstream uh, subscribes to the output of the second module. Okay. So the first one generates the messages, the second reads these messages, okay. and the second generates another enhanced message, and that is being forwarded yes, to the upstream. Right, yeah, okay. And effectively, by uh, examining the subscriptions mm -hmm. we've done, we can generate the routing table for you. Mm -hmm. Then what we're going to do in this uh, console app is we're going to uh, generate the manifest. Okay. You can use that. Uh, that is pretty useful uh, in uh, CI/CD scenarios. You can generate that at yeah. uh, uh, CI/CD pipeline. We were talking about that. You do an iteration on your application. It in, like, includes like con modifications in both modules, for example. And you want to republish because you create a new output, for example, on one of the modules and that is consumed on a different input on the second one. That could be uh, the kind of scenarios, right? It's, it gets really interesting. Uh, so we've seen some customers doing uh, even better things. For example, you most probably want to have some kind of a staging uh, CI/CD where mm -hmm. you publish to your yep. production things like that. Yep, and yep. as with all uh, applications, mm -hmm. most probably you want to have some kind of a different variance your yeah. different stages. Mm -hmm. So by having uh, the same code-based 
tool to generate mm. your manifest. You can use configuration to drive this tool as normal console app okay. and generate the different variants in your different um, staging environments. I For example, that. we send customers to add a uh, debugging module mm -hmm. that is uh, effectively uh, recording stuff and okay. traces. It's more wordy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then in their actual production, they uh, omit that. Makes sense. Makes perfect sense. All right, and then just uh, build the uh, emulated device. Uh, okay. uh, we provision, first of all, the device. We build locally the device in memory, then mm -hmm. we run everything. Okay. And if I actually hit F5 without doing anything else, we hope we're going to see an <laughs> ITS application firing up. There we go. And this is the, uh, this is the banner, the well-known banner of ITH. Everything in the runtime just fired up. And if we give it some time, you'll see the messages flowing in. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, um, the two modules actually started communicating. And to show you that uh, the communication goes all the way to uh, Azure, I'm going to connect to my device. Okay. And see what's going on. And all the upstream data should be showing up here. There right. you go. Awesome. So uh, I just uh, just fired up my um, um, ITH application, mm -hmm. and uh, to show you that nothing runs in Docker, I'm going to run Docker PS. Show you there is no container yeah. running. You don't even need Docker installed. Yeah, <laughs> you may you might need it if you want to go all the way to publishing. Yeah, true. But not necessarily for development. Yeah. That is the big deal. Yeah. Now that's that's a huge deal. And actually, you are in your closed loop. You are in your local machine, and you're working on that code. You're focused on code, basically, right? It's the developer thing. Right. And then, if you think about in uh, some of our customers that are really big organizations, usually mm -hmm. you have different people working on different aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, you have developers and DevOps people that yep. are managing all the uh, DevOps part. Yep. And it's a good idea to be able to separate these two things. Makes sense. Awesome. You were you were mentioning the fact that for now, uh, Type Age is is compatible and works with with .NET Core. Right. Are we looking into other languages? Because people might be actually building modules of using different languages as they are doing today. So uh, cross uh, language uh, support is in the pipeline. Okay. Uh, we want to hear uh, your opinion about uh, Type Age. Uh, if mm -hmm. you think uh, you like it, let us know, and we're going to invest more time in it. Awesome. Well, that was a great demo. So people, we're going to add the link to the tap type edge repo, which is actually github.com slash azure slash type edge. So yeah. right? And uh, send us your feedback and we're gonna definitely ingest that and try and make that a product because I think it's fantastic. Great job Spiros. Thank you. Thanks for watching the IT show and don't forget to subscribe.